live in a psychedelic world. I mean, if you, between what you can see on television, what you can play in a video game, what you can experience online is so patently explosive and absurd compared to what human beings were capable of visualizing 50 years ago. You, you have options spiritually just from things hitting your nervous system that, that people before us did not have. Possible. I can Twitter with someone across the earth and their thoughts, feelings, and emotions can affect my soul immediately. That's a, a statistical and tactical impossibility 50 years ago. Pre, I mean, be, before the phone even, you couldn't even wrap your head around how someone's nervous system, and you couldn't affect somebody's nervous system if you were outside a shouting distance at one point. Now you can literally be shocked by something that happens instantly in Bangladesh or in London or you know, in New York, and you're in L.A. That was, yeah. So our souls, our nervous systems are so open now compared to the people who lived before us that we live a mystical existence by accident. I don't know that social media or media exposure or public exposure is, is intrusive on my soul, partly because I know no other route. I mean, I've been doing stand-up since I was 15, and arguably I've just crested over the first decade of being known. I'm in the first 10 years of my career, for real, because it's been about a decade since Talk Soon. So this is still new to me. This is still, you know, an experience. But I'm very comfortable with it in that the safest thing you can do in your expression, in social media, or in front of crowds, or in, when fans approach you, is to be genuinely, authentically yourself. And therefore, it's never exhausting. It's called Helsinki.
Our one defining characteristic, the lack of definition. I mean, ultimately, um, I do what I do when I want to do it for the reasons that I want to do it, and I really don't give a rat's ass about other people's opinions um, because I've already done the weeding process. I would never act outside my own ethics, act outside my own emotional uh, bubble, as it were. I would never take an emotion out on someone that doesn't deserve it. So, I don't care if somebody... It's like, you know, I have a joke in my act, I don't have any guilty pleasures. Because I, if, I, if, there, if I would feel guilty about it, I wouldn't do it in the first place. And if I'm doing it, I don't feel guilty. I don't, And I don't listen to music for someone else's taste. I don't eat the food I like because I care about what's some, on someone else's plate, ever. Alright, you primitive screwheads, listen up. This is my boomstick!
certain extent. I think consciousness exists in the moment regardless of whether you like it or not. So you can't be separate from moment to moment belief unless you're intentionally trying. Most people chase the future and run from the past as a way of avoiding the present. Um, and I think, ultimately, I can't help but be me in this moment. Even if me is how worrying about the future, or how worrying about the... That is me. That is me in this moment. That is the true self. If I want to, con to, to cultivate a version of myself that is more present-minded, then I have to disconnect from my love or fear of the future and my love or fear of the past. But there's nothing, time is an illusion. So the future, the present, and the past exist at the same time, in the, in the same moment. You can be future-minded and still be your present self. Because daydreaming, as far as your brain is concerned, is just as real as this conversation or what's on this tape. You know, all this tape ever captures is the past. There's no way to watch me online and watch this without knowing you're capturing the past. John F. Kennedy once said, if I don't get a strange piece of ass every day, I get a migraine headache. And he, this song is lovingly dedicated to him. Magic Bosa. This is called Strange.
I think there's an element of, you know, from told stories written and expressed to reality TV to you stream and streaming stuff or live live experiences. Why live theater has got so much strength to it is that move towards present moment. Because a, a, a TV show is the relation of an idea that somebody goes, I want to convey this understanding about something that did happen or might happen because of a uh, way of life. I'll write something, convey it to you. We'll all act it out. It happened in the abstract or it happened in the past, and we'll carry it to you. And it's a long road from the creation to the actual expression. That being said, Ustream or these moments are instant. There's value to taking your time to express a story. You know, there is something too going in the future. I wish to express this better than I could right now. Even if I was totally magically present minded, I still got an evolutionary arc in my own life. It's really mechanical. So it's very in the 
moment kind of feeling that you have when you're yeah. when you're going on stage. Yeah. Um, and, I, and and sort of an emotional knowledge that it will be over before I know it. Every hour is a chapter, so. You know, some chapters in a book feel up like they're more important or more exciting than others, but they aren't if the whole thing tells a story. I guess uh, all the songs are about perspective. They're all about understanding. They're all about taking an obtuse view of a circumstance we all experience. We all experience some sort of loss. We all experience some sort of heartbreak. But we're all looking at it in a similar way. So we're attacking it the same way. So maybe through music and other arts, we can take a side angle at it and really start to solve the issue or dissect it in a way that helps us not fear it as much. Are you going to take me on tonight? Oh, down beside the red firelight.
uh, just played at the Dragonfly? How did I did. Feel? I feel tired. Tired? I, well, I mean, it's a good time. Well, that's because like you lost really, really, really hard. Um, it's great. It was fine. Good stage, good sound. You know, on to bigger and better things. Awesome. House of Blues, July 4th, Steel Panther. And, uh, yeah, the venue's a little bit bigger and better. So, there you go. Completely offended, and um, I might not do the show because they offend every sense sensibility that I have. Not really. I think they're fun. They're just, it's all tongue in cheek. They're all married. Oop, did I say that on camera? <laughs> I don't think anybody's supposed to know that. <laughs> Oops. They're all, uh, they're just joking. They are just joking. And it's a fun show. It's a fun show. And we encourage everybody to go out and see Steve everybody. Panther on Monday nights at... I'll be there. House of I might be there. Now, July 4th. This is like a rehearsal in front of friends. And that's a show. And that's... You know, that's... We'll shine there. Do you approach that differently? Because it, it seems no, it's that... It's not approach, it's just that you feed off a large audience. Maybe externally it seems like that, but internally, I know I feed off a crowd, a large crowd. And, um... So I think I'm going to be eating a lot that night. Um... That's up to some debate. Only because I didn't write it down. At some point, about a year ago. Just about a year ago? Did Hal have Zero One Well, I... Zero One was, existed previous to Brian and I. And uh, I knew Hal from before, about four years ago. <laughs> I missed the question! But what... what I'm sorry, the answer is that... I, I, Brian. I, I've made him stumble because that's the effect that I have on people. Oh, see? Sometimes I'll be no. likely to oh, hold on. be a tad silly and, and people go, bricks. I'm like, what? what? Even. Just saying, somebody else stumbled. What do you mean that the bricks? The bricks all are, in all, we're just a, the bri no, the, the bricks are all uneven. All, all right. Um, the Brits, the Brits are uneven. Oh, the, well, the Brits are entirely uneven because, well, they're Brits. I mean, for course sakes, so they're Brits. And no, I'm not actually British. It's just like... And in what case you don't know, this is Brian Crow, who's the lead guitarist you of just Zero One. You totally just rhymed. Well, I'm like, in case that. you I'm don't a, know, I'm a this is Brian Crow. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <kinda>. <laughs>